Hello, Internet, and welcome to another episode of That's All I Have to Say About That, Thai Thursday. As always, I'm your host, Stephen Mackey. Bitcoin, something that's harder to regulate than Trump's Twitter feed, and equally as erratic. Well, today we're going to talk about Thailand's anti-money laundering office, because it was recently announced that they're trying to pass new legislation to regulate Bitcoin. And good luck with that one. That's like trying to dam a river with a fishing net. So first, let's get some background. What is money laundering? Well, basically, it's making money acquired illicitly usable. If you show up to a bank to deposit a few million dollars in cash and you can't answer the simple question of how you got it, well, the government's going to reward you by paying for your room and board as you spend the next few years of your life in jail. People launder money so that they can have more legitimate answers to how they came across that million bot than explaining to a bank teller how their recent investment in the Yaba industry really paid dividends last quarter. And for you Westerners listening, Yaba is a Thai drug that's a mixture of meth and caffeine. Because that really was the problem with meth, not giving people enough energy. Which brings us to the overall problem. Thailand's anti-money laundering office is trying to address. Thailand's anti-money laundering office is going to step up surveillance of Bitcoin by requiring that digital currency exchanges report their transactions to the office. Why target cryptocurrency? Well, whether it's intended for it or not, Bitcoin is amazing at hiding the origin of money. I mean, the only better way of eliminating any trace of your money I can think of is having one too many drinks on Soy Cowboy. Oh, you bet that'll make any trace of your money disappear. Bitcoin is so good at helping people launder money because it allows for anonymous transactions. Although, when I was your age, if we wanted to make an anonymous transaction, we just used cash and it worked just dandy. I mean, what's so unanonymous about cash anyways? It's not like it's my picture on the bill. What, are your modern day Thai criminals too good for the Benjamins? Or, oh, since this is Thailand, the Ramans? Well, anyway, cash has its limits, because if you're trying to launder the estimated 20 million baht being turned into bitcoins and small cash payments, you're going to make cash faster than you can spend it, which, wow, talk about a good problem. Except no, because that's where you get headlines like, Police in a raid in Thailand seized 1.5 million RM and 42 million baht in cash. You gotta invest that. The only thing that cash is accruing right now is cobwebs. Only problem is, again, you go walking into a bank with 42 million bots and try to deposit it, and someone's gonna ask, how? Now, there are other methods of getting money, but they're all huge hassles, and wouldn't you know it, there's a better way. Introducing the Bitcoin, a revolutionary way to hide the origins of your funds. So what makes Bitcoin so great for laundering money, you ask? Well, after googling how do money launderers buy Bitcoin, I'm sure I'm on some list. But it yielded the answer I was looking for. Think of it in terms of paying in cash for things, except scalable and non-location specific. In the cash example, let's say you take out a hundred bots out of the bank and use it to buy a cookie. Then the baker deposits that same hundred bot in his account. All the bank sees is that you withdrew a hundred bot and the banker deposited it. They don't know it's the same money and they don't know any information or even if a transaction takes place. That's exactly how Bitcoin works, with people being able to see how much any account paid out and earned, but no actual trackable connection between them. So now to the point we're talking about earlier. Thailand's anti-money laundering office is looking to monitor Bitcoin's digital currency exchanges. Once a person has their money in Bitcoin, they're untrackable. But what the Thai government is trying to do is regulate the places where a person can convert their cash into Bitcoin. Which sounds like a pretty obvious solution. It's like getting sick every time you eat apples and deciding not to eat apples, instead of throwing billions of dollars into looking for a cure. Now to all those frightened investors out there who still really want to buy Bitcoin, first off, don't. It halved in value in a few days last month and is not recognized as a legal currency in Thailand, so you have nowhere to go if the currency plummets. And second off, don't worry, you can still buy Bitcoin in Thailand. If this amendment passes, they're only going to ask if you bring in like 48 million baht, hey, where'd you get this money? 
And considering that 90% of criminal organizations in Thailand launder their money through Bitcoin, Medjin do not think that this is an unreasonable ask. 90% of criminal organizations though? I'm starting to think that crime might be fueling Bitcoin and not the other way around. So this got me thinking, how do other countries regulate their Bitcoins, specifically America and China? Two countries who are, unsurprisingly, pretty opposite in their approaches to dealing with this problem. So let's start with America, a country where our leaders, for whatever reason, seem to hate regulation. We're here today for one single reason, to cut the red tape of regulation. We ordered that for every one new regulation, Two old regulations must be eliminated. Didn't you get into that job because you liked power? What are you doing trying to take away all of your own regulative power? Anyways, Bitcoin regulation. According to MarketWatch, in the US our cryptocurrency market is managed state by state in an innovative way of making it so that the regulatory might of one state is entirely negated by the incompetent regulations of its neighbor. Essentially, this means that states like Vermont can pass cryptocurrency regulations similar to the regulations being proposed in Thailand, while their neighbor to the east, New Hampshire, wants to get Bitcoin companies to move in by simplifying the laws and not charging any taxes on Bitcoins. So if you can cross that unregulated border, you can launder money to your heart's desire. Bet that military junta is looking pretty appealing right about now. So now, let's go to the other extreme, China, who just straight up banned any trading of cryptocurrency. They thought it was too hard to regulate and too dangerous to the economy, so they just banned it. This means that when you're in China, you can't convert your cash into bitcoins. Although, if you already have bitcoins by the nature of the currency, you can use them. So that's the constitutional amendment that the anti-money laundering office is trying to pass to regulate Bitcoin sales. Thank you, and that's all I have to say about that. Hello YouTube, I have a line account and my ID is Person of Interest 101 and my QR code is right here. So feel free to reach out to me if you have any suggestions for future episodes. Make sure you remember to subscribe by clicking here and check out some of our previous episodes of Thai Thursday by clicking here. Or, and this is pretty cool, you can click right here and YouTube will use its top secret brilliant algorithm to suggest the video of mine they think you like the most.